And then he had me scream. And then he had to, wanted to see if I could cry. I was nine. And I had taken acting classes, and the way that I was taught to cry was to stare and not blink. <laughs> Until your eyes burn. <laughs> and then once it gets going, then it just happens. So, and then I think the final call back was, my, it was between myself and um, Melissa Joan Hart, actually, for the role of Jamie. So it could, have been, it could have been either one of us. So I just got lucky. Again, I think it's like, is she gonna paint it? And I was older and was short and looked younger and could play younger and listen on set. And you know, they knew they can get away with a lot of, a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, so I got lucky. Covering me with like glycerin so that I would look like I was sweating, but it was uh, very, very cold, yeah. And I was in tiny little shorts, no shirt for most of the movie, yeah. so. God. It sounds bad, doesn't it? Hardly <laughs> 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 well, um, Yeah, no, I was the same. I mean, it was back in the 70s, I went to the premiere, but I think like during the whole process of a film, when you're the kid, and you put it very well, I think they sort of pick kids that they thought would be okay with the whole process. Um, so watching it wasn't wasn't scary. I didn't didn't find it anything really. Like because you know that it's a film. You've been in the process of watching it being made, and you're there, and you just know it's fake. Well, I did. That's how I saw it. You know, you've got pretend mum, pretend dad, pretend dogs. So it was for me. It was just like watching like a kind of home movie that you put together. It wasn't. I think yeah, I didn't find it. I didn't get the suspense, the thriller that everyone else got because of, you know, like cheat code, I knew what was happening. That's a hell of a whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think, uh, I think Harvey's right. It's like watching, for me too, it's like watching kind of a home movie when you see, when I see the movie now, uh, just because, it, you know, whatever scene it is will just remind me of something that was behind the scenes or one of the you know crew members you know that had something to do with that scene or you know what have you it's not uh, you know watching it for the story or, or anything like that it's it's I think when you're when you're young like that it triggers the memories of everything else so it's more yeah, it's more like a home movie does it still trigger that stuff when you guys watch it now Sorry. Does it still trigger those things? Like I can smell what yeah, well, certain sure. things smelled like or felt like or... I think, yeah, it's, it's just exactly as you just said. Like I can remember like, like certain scenes, you know, when they put a baboon in the back of the car. Um, because that's how the first time they tried try to get the baboons to attack. Mm -hmm. um, they wasn't really that responsive, so they put food on the, on the car. But the next thing you know, they um, actually got a tranquilizer gun they shot the alpha male and he's now unconscious and they put him in the back of the car as well so as a kid when you see me being scared there that was that wasn't acting that was me i was petrified and they had a guy in the back with a gun in case the baboon got in and i don't think you get away with this now but i mean and the worst thing was i mean obviously i don't think many people know this but baboons stink i mean they stink so I'm petrified, there's stinky baboons in there, they're all going mad and attacking the car, you know, so things like that just stick with you, you don't need to be reminded of that, obviously when you see the film, it's, it's all there, it just reunites that, that sort of memory. So if you go to the zoo... I don't know zoos <laughs> 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 it just brings you back to that yeah, memory. I mean, it's, it's quite a cool thing to do, I mean, yeah. not many six-year-olds go through that process. You know, it's, it's like a gift that keeps giving because here I am now, the other side of the world, um, you know, my day-to-day -day life is very, very normal. And then suddenly you put it here and everyone's, you know, very similar experiences we've had and people have enjoyed our films. I mean, it's quite mad, really. The premiere, I don't remember. Um, I remember I couldn't go to the premiere for Halloween 5 for some reason, I was living in New York, so the, the producer, Mustafa Akkad, actually sent my mom like $5,000 and said, put on a, a premiere for her in, we're in your area. So we like rented a theater and I had a limo and you know, like the whole cheesy thing you do in 1990. Invited all my friends that were far too young to watch the movie from junior high or actually, well, no, I would be in like sixth grade. 
and packed the theater in Queens and we all watched it and you know, it was crazy. It was really fun though. That's the good coolest care of sixth grade party ever. <laughs> <laughs> We're all like hanging out of the roof with the limo, you know. I wore some like sequined and orange ridiculous dress. I was just went for it. <laughs> Does anybody have a question? The whole thing with smells though is so true. Um, in As the World Turns, there was a scene when they set, somebody set our house on fire and my mom and I were trapped in the closet. And so whenever I smell smoke on Halloween time, I'm triggered the memory of being on set because it was the same smoke that they used, right? So I do totally have that. What about like, I always get it with, you know, streaks and tips. It's yeah. like uh, it's like an aerosol spray that's supposed to make you look like you're dirty. It's like a brown color. Every time I smell that smell, and I immediately remember being on that. Set. Yeah, that's, yeah, true. Yeah, Fuller is just a, it's a no, it's it's different. Fuller's are just a powder that they put on you, but the streaks doesn't really have a smell. But the streaks and tips is like an aerosol spray that also looks like dirt. That has like that, you know, really strong hairspray smell. But it's like very specific. And I remember when I came back for Rob's Halloween, Rob Zombie's remake, I got in the van and Tyler Main got in the front seat and he had had it on his costume. And as soon as he got in the van, I was like, oh my God, I'm 10 years old again. This is so crazy. Because I hadn't smelt it since then. But it immediately brought me back to that time, which was really cool. And uh, she had her daughter with her and she said, this is, she was looking at me and she said, this is Jamie, this is Jamie. As though I was like meeting my child for the first, you know, like one of those. I was like, okay, she goes, I named her. I named her after your character in Halloween 4. And I said, and you're her mom? And she said, yes, it's my daughter. And I said, you do know that I kill my mother at the end of the movie, right? I would have probably picked a different character, but that's just me. And like, she just kept laughing and crying and smiling. Like it just went right over her head. <laughs> Stab her with scissors. Why would you name your daughter that? But that's okay. So that was interesting. Just walked over the, that just that right small over. detail there. I mean, I still, you know, there are definitely, I mean, there are still people when I'm at shows that I'm like, oh my God, they're so and so, oh my God, they're so and so. You know, I don't know if it's crushes is more of like, oh my god, this is this is so cool and so crazy and I love it. It's not really horror though, because it's like it's for horror movies. It's everyone's my they're like your friends, you know. So it's hard to kind of see them in that way. But it's the other, the other actors that I'm like, oh my god, that's that's so and so. That you know, Barbara Hershey's Barbara Hershey's here. You know what I mean? It's that kind of stuff that you're like, oh my god, that's crazy. When do you get to meet all these people? So it's pretty cool. Any other ones? I mean, I met the cast from um, Back to the Future, and that was such a big film for me when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. So I, I literally was like, wow, you know, it, it does, it has the same effect on me, I suppose, as some people meet some of their, whatever they look up to, stars, whatever, films that influence them. But, yeah, and I, and I met Apollo Creed. He was, uh, I don't know what his real name is. Apollo Creed out of Rocky, what's his real name? Someone? No, no, the other guy. Yeah, I mean, again, I was like blown away. Yeah. It's like, God, it's a pot of creed. I grew up shadow boxing. <laughs> you know? It's like, that's, it's just weird. It's just, it is, and then you meet them. It's, it's funny. Cool. Um, now, how hard is it and was it to be a child actor? Oh, God, that's a very open ended question. Yeah. That's a very open ended question. Uh, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday. Yeah. Um, and we have. I love your theory, um, but I was thinking more about your theory, and I really don't, I don't know if it's true, like for me, that I, that I have any sort of scarring from it. Um, but you know, we always, I always get asked how traumatized was I by the movie, like at least once every convention, someone truly thinks that I was truly traumatized by those dogs. Um, for me though, the, the hardest part of being a child actor was actually trying to be an adult actor um, and you know the, the five years when I grew up and wanted to be you know after who's the boss I was trying to get away from Jonathan Bauer and I was trying to be just a good actor and then I was outed and suddenly I was gay and I just I had a really crappy few years and it was so crappy that I stopped acting for over 10 years because it was so traumatizing so for me it was post child I, I, for me as a kid 
I mean, generally we were treated fairly well. My mom was always buying me toys because I did a good job on set or was a great audition and, you know, money's good and yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I tell them your theory because I think it's interesting. So I, I wondered, you know, now nowadays they've got intimacy coordinators and they've got COVID compliance officers and there's all this stuff. And, you know, we, we did horror in, in the 70s and 80s. So, you know, we were saying earlier, this stuff wouldn't fly nowadays. Um, but a lot of the stuff that we did was, was pretty, it's pretty intense for children to have to go through. And I think only once I had kids, I started thinking about, you know, why there wasn't someone on set to sort of talk the child out of, you know, your, your body doesn't know that you're an actor, right? So you're a kid and you, you have to think that there's gotta be some sort of PTSD or something in your, I mean, this is getting a little deep, but something, some sort of memory in your cells that holds on to that stuff, you know? Um, it's very difficult and it's really interesting to watch kids on set in horror and I've seen it now, I've had kids now finally in movies, you know, where I play the mom and I'm always watching and how easily you can you can slip into these characters and then cut and you're like, <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, that was so fun, you know, and like there's there's a there's a crazy disconnect that happens and I just wish there was someone on set that was sort of helping talk us through because it's not scary because there's a bunch of people around, you know, but I wonder what it does, like, I mean, as an adult, I've, you know, been chased and hyperventilated and crying and, and have a hard time shaking it off. Um, so I wonder what that does uh, to, to kids, you know, over the years, because you're, you're still growing, your body, your brain is still developing, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I started having some health issues when I got in my 30s, um, and thought like I want when I started doing a lot of horror when I came back for Rob's and started doing a lot of stuff and I thought God I wonder if this is related to any of that stuff, um, but it's uh, yeah it's a, it's a, it's it's an interesting thing because you know as parents don't want to be the one to be there only very few parents of kid actors have been like my kid's not doing that scene or they're not doing that because you're you're scared you know as a parent you don't want to be the one that pulls your kid off set or be difficult to work with or because you get a, it's a, you get a stigma and then you'll never work again and a lot of us had to support our families unfortunately or you know it was always like I was, I, my, my least favorite question is usually did you know that you always want did you always know you wanted to be an actor i was like i wanted to be a fucking princess <laughs> like, <laughs> You, I wanted to be like, you know, you, you, you don't know what an actor is when you're a child. You just want to make everyone happy and you want to make your, you know, make, have your mom and dad be proud of you um, and be, be, you know, get those kudos when you're at work and you get toys and you get, you know, you don't get to get out of school and, you know, it's like, yeah, you get to go do this movie. That means I don't have to go to school every single day. How awesome. And I get to order French fries on room service and I'm 10. How amazing is this? And I just have to sign a piece of paper and I get it whenever I want it. Um, so I think it's, 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 it's different. And I mean, we didn't grow up with social media, thank God. Thank God, I don't know how these kids do it nowadays. It's just fucking devastating. YouTube and parents making their kids work and all kinds of weird shit. But, so I have mixed feelings. I'm anti-kids being in the business. Um, I had a great experience on set though. Like my home life was a little crazy. My, my, my life on set was like my happy place. It was really important as a kid for me to have structure. You know, I loved going to work because I knew I, what time I had to be there. I knew when lunch was gonna be. I knew when I got to go home. I knew what, what the day was like. And I had all these people around me that did their jobs and everything was like, you know, regimented. So for me, it was a really good place to have structure. It's kind of like sports for kids that come from troubled homes. Like they, they need that in order to not go down the wrong path. So for me, that's what kid acting realistically was. But um, yeah, it was, it's, it's, child acting is, and I went through the same thing as you, that like weird period where everybody was super skinny and I wasn't, and I wasn't all American girl, you know, I wasn't the CW and the WB material and all that bullshit that we all had to go through. And um, so I just rebelled and like cut all my hair and gained weight and was like, fuck you, fuck, fuck off. I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. And then eventually it kind of came back and started playing, you know, more authentic characters. But there was a good 10 years where I was like, I don't know if I could do this anymore. This is too hard, man. The transition, kid actor to adult actor, either you quit or you fight through it and somehow come out on the other side. But they're few and far between, that's for sure.
Well, well and, and again, I, luckily I didn't plan to ask that question, so I feel much better. <laughs> but I can revise that to say, after you were acting, when did you decide you wanted to be an actor? Because right here on this tape, uh, right here at the session, we have two people who are actors and two people who are not. I don't know, I still don't know if I want to be an actor. <laughs> it depends on the job, like I hate the process of getting the job, you know? But once you're on set, I'm like, oh, I love what I'm doing. I love those moments where you get to connect and like work with awesome actors and awesome people and you have those authentic moments where you're like, wow, that was, I was really out of my body and connecting right there and that just felt really good. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a love-hate relationship, I yes. think, for sure. I, I found it tedious. I think maybe if I'd have got into it later, mm. I might have wanted to carry it on, but to be honest, being six and hanging around sets all day and doing things 10, 20, 30 times, and I found it just boring. Mm. Maybe if I'd have done it at 12, I might have yeah. appreciated it, but at the time, I was just happy to have done it, happy it was finished. And coming from London, it's not like the film industry. There are shows and you know there is something there, but it's not like America. So it was very easy just to go that boom, not bothered about it, and leave it at that. Did you get recognised everywhere you guys went when you were a kid? No, no, I was quite lucky. I'll tell you what did happen, I was weird, because obviously I was five or six, I went to school, you know, I never really got spoken about. Mm -hmm. But then when I was 11, and I went to secondary school, then everyone had seen the film, you know, the 14 or 15 year olds. It was like I'd literally just come out and been released in the cinemas. Mm -hmm. It was like mental. And I wasn't really prepared for that. I literally turned up at school and the place was just going mad. And I was like, fuck me, what's happening here? Who's this for? And I was like, it's for you. And I'm like, what? What's going on? You like, don't want that attention, right? It's hard. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was really weird. So I wasn't prepared for that because I just thought, you know, I did it six years ago. And in my mind, it was long ago and that was it. And again, that put me off even more. You know, like, I just wanted to not forget about it, but that was it. It was done and... I wasn't interested anymore. Mm. Uh, Danny Wood. Um, uh, I don't really remember the question, but I will. <laughs> I will say that um, you know, being a non-actor, you know, um, it worked out for the best, really. I think, you know, again, programming is the wrong word, but the way I was selected, it, you know, for the Shining, it wasn't. It wasn't acting, it wasn't an acting ability necessarily. So um, after The Shining, you know, I did, you know, people ask me a lot, you know, why didn't you do anything else? Well, the truth is, uh, you know, I did audition for things and it just wasn't, just wasn't meant to be, which is, you know, fine. That's, uh, that worked out, you know, to be the right thing for me. So it's, um, it's really, just like hitting the lottery or a one-hit wonder or whatever, which I'm fine with because like Harvey says, you know, you get to come to shows like this and meet fans of the movies. And you know, you're, you know, there's a lot of people responsible for the movie and you're kind of like an ambassador for the fans, you know, and how much they enjoy the movie and things like that. So, you know, wasn't, I wasn't like that in my, in high school and in my twenties, I just, you know, I was totally, stay away from me and you know totally no nothing like that but you know as you get older you appreciate things more and and that's kind of how it went kind of full circle for me are you saying we're old is that what you're I, i'm old <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm uh i the, the the interesting part for me was that my parents by the time the show was starting who's the boss was starting to end we had already started to see the sort of downfall of the child celebrity and some of the mess that had been caused by that. And so they made a very concerted effort to make sure that, because that's the problem. It's the transition from the job to regular life. And if you haven't gone to school, like most of us were and actually in school, you don't have that to fall back on. And then you're not getting jobs. And then your parents aren't making money. You know, you're not supporting your family, so they're freaking out because what do we do now? And there's this whole transition period which can go very poorly. Um, so my parents had figured that out. And Danielle and I actually went to the same high school. But the version I did, you were going to set, and I had done the, my parents went to Who's the Boss and said, when I started seventh grade, they said, either you let him actually go to school or we're not coming back to the show. And so I would go to our high school from first period to fifth period every day. And then I would go to set and be there till six, seven o'clock. So they would skip my material until I got to set. And 
it was the biggest blessing in my life because the day after the show ended, I just went to school for the whole day. Amazing, yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, that led me to graduate, and that led me to go to Stanford University, and I graduated from Stanford. None of that would have been possible if my parents hadn't had the foresight to make sure that that transition was seamless. Yes. Um, and so that was a huge blessing. But the the other the, the other the flip side is that when I went to school full time. That was the first time, so I was 16, right? That, at 16 years old, that was the first time I ever had actually asked myself, what do I want to be when I grow up? So I'm 16 years old and doing what I should have done when I was three, four, five, right? I don't want to be a fireman when I grow right. up. And I didn't do that until I was 16, and that really set me behind, in a way, for life. And then the next 10 years were filled with drugs and nonsense and, oh, yeah. you know, the whole mess of stuff. But um, I'm so grateful to my parents for having that foresight, for sure. So what did you decide you wanted to be when you were 16? Uh, I wanted to be a veterinarian. Yeah. So I went to Stanford to be a veterinarian, and I couldn't pass the math and science to save my life. So I actually left because I was so upset. I went back to LA, I'm gonna be an actor because I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. And then a few months later, I was like, wait a minute, it's Stanford University. You've yeah. gotta graduate from Stanford, go back to school. So I went and I was a directing focus on the drama major. So at least, you know, I grad, right. but um, yeah. And then it was like 10 years of, well, maybe I want to be a talent agent. Maybe I want to be a casting director. Maybe I want to work at P.F. Chang's. Maybe I want to, <laughs> and then uh, for five years in Austin, I've basically been doing veterinary stuff. I finally got back into that. And I've been a vet technician for a bunch of years. But late last year, I finally had this moment where I was like, I finally again feel like I'm missing out on great stuff, especially because there's just wonderful gay characters in so many TV shows right yes. now, and that's pretty much all I can play, right? It's all I want to play. Um, and so now that there's actually like really great opportunities, something clicked, and I started acting again, or you know, officially in January, and my first audition back, I landed the job. So amazing! We'll see what happens. Yeah, no, no, it's just very, very similar. No? Just saying, I mean, I think our sort of experience and especially how you described the acting, you know, like you said, it wasn't really acting, it was just following direction. Obviously, there's a few things you did, but we was, oh, I felt was just too young. They said do this, we did it repetitively until we did it how they kind of visioned it. I, that's how I see it. So really similar, a lot of similarities here. When I was a very young child in like the first year of my life, I had some seizures in the hospital. And so my mom came up and said, um, when you were young, you did it like this, and this is what's happening, and you were grabbing your neck, and this and that. And so I went back on set, and we did it again, and everyone was like, oh my god, that was amazing. And I was like, oh yeah, apparently I did that when I was the baby. And I mean, it's like, I, I, there's this, there's this, I've always said that for my career as a young actor, so much of it was really intense. I mean, as the world turns, I, all I did was cry and scream and, you know, just soap opera acting. And you can't teach a six-year-old how to do that. It's just, you can't. And, and it truly brings me to the idea that I was born to do that. Like there were the fates, the universe was sort of guiding me through that process. And, and it was just inherent. I don't know how else to explain it. There's no way to teach a six-year-old to, to make you truly believe that they're dying and having a seizure. And so many people say that that's the scariest move, moment for them because they are, like moms especially, are just so terrified that I'm gonna die. Um, but I, I can't, I don't know how, it just is. That movie brings me to tears. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if it's because I have two young boys, and I know D and I know you, but it's like, I just, that movie, it is just, your performance in that movie is fucking phenomenal. You did everybody up here, I'm honored to be sitting up here with all of you guys, for real. Yeah. It's my, uh, the, the new generation of Halloween, so we've got the new and the old, um, it's called Talk Scary to Me. Um, we're having a blast with it, actually. It's, it's naughty and fun and, you know, all the things that we like to talk about. Sex, love, horror, all that. Um, I did a movie, I've done a bunch of movies last year. I don't know what's taking everyone so long to get them done. <laughs> but um, I'm most excited about a movie that I did uh, called Natty Knox. 
um, the director from Halloween 4 and uh, Dwight Little. Um, he also directed me and Marked for Death right after that, but he wrote this movie and directed it, so it's my first time working with him again in you know 30 years, more than that, 35 years. Um, it's myself and Bill Mosley and Robert England, and it's just really good. And I play a mom of two teenagers, which is crazy and really fun, and uh, I had a really nice time. Again, just that sense of memory of like being back on set and doing a horror movie with Dwight Little was like crazy, crazy, crazy. I like was immediately brought back to like when he locked me in a closet <laughs> in the dark so I would cry. Like right away I was like, I remember when you did that to me when you locked me in the closet so I would cry. Um, so that's, that's what I'm most excited about. Cool, all right. So Watch your stuff, go to the tables. See that, they're autographs, that's why they're here. Meet them, talk them, ask the questions you were too afraid to ask now. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's thank to Danny Pintoro, Harvey Stevens, uh, Danny Lloyd, and Danielle Harris. Thank you very much.